Think about an animal in a zoo. An animal's deprived of the very things that keep that animal going, the, the, the smells, the sights, the sounds, the instincts, the hunting. And they become psychotic, literally psychotic. I mean, their behavior is gone. They're social animals, and we, we can understand their behavior, and so the term psychotic makes sense in wolves, for instance. Dogs, certainly. There are more psychotic dogs around us than any other kind. And I think that we've done something to ourselves that is exactly analogous to that. We put ourselves in a cage, in this cage of civilization, of cities, and it's made us, in a way, psychotic. That if you would have a group of hunter-gatherers, and this has happened a lot, hunter-gatherers watch behavior of people in our society, they would think we were crazy for the way we behave, because we are. And we become crazy because we've lost that physical contact with what goes on around us. We are sensual beings. We try to replace it in a jillion different ways. That's why music is so important to us, art is so important to us. But it's a substitute for what was there all along, that opening that can occur from being out there. And it, it's difficult to explain it to someone who's never experienced it. But when you've experienced it, it's not some great magical, mystical thing so much as it's just very real. It's just a sensual thing to simply go back and live the way that we were evolved to live. We can think of this also in terms of ethics, and I've finally become decided to define ethics as, as being true to your genetic heritage in some way, in that we try to um, um, deny that genetic heritage and say that we are not that way, that we are not animal, and therefore we suppress those things within us. But I think that a, a proper system would examine as deeply as we can and as rationally as we can what we are and what we're meant to be, and then allow your life to somehow mirror that, mirror, mirror your genetic heritage in some way.